In the last part, we left off starting the Thus Spoke Khajiit quest. The quest will automatically start when you turn in the Dine and Dash quest to Jacob at Stendar's Beacon. Altano will mention he has friends in the Ratway that can help him investigate the Dejra Summoned. He wants us to meet him in the Ratway. Once you reach the Ratway, look around for Altano. He should have a quest marker above his head. Speak to him. Did you find anything about the Daedra and the Ratway? I heard a Khajiit called Giovanni summoned it. Find that Khajiit while I search for the Daedra. Altano will tell you to search for a Khajiit who summoned a Daedra. We can find that Khajiit in the Ratway Warrens, but first we have to go through the Ratway Vaults. Follow me. Once you're in the vaults, you can jump all the way down here to get to the warrens. However, you should watch out for skeevers and low lives. You can find Yovani, the Kaji we're looking for, behind this locked door. Once you get past it, speak to him. Giovanni is looking for Campanera. His precious Campanera, where is she? I heard you summon a Daedra. Is this true? Giovanni tried. Giovanni tried with sweet skooma and liver of a skeever. But, but nothing happened. Giovanni did what the glowing woman told him and nothing happened. Why? Who was that woman? Giovanni noticed. <laughs> Giovanni is very smart. The liver of a skiver was not good enough. Giovanni noticed. But perhaps the liver in front of him is good. Good enough? Giovanni says so. Campanera will also say so. After this line, Giovanni will attack you. You must defeat him. Shortly after you take him out, you will collapse to the floor and the screen will fade to black. You will then reappear in a flashback from Yovani. Once you get up, speak to the Gaji at the cooking pot. Once her conversation is done, we must sit at the table and then speak to her again. Now we must speak to the Gaji at the tanning station. Now, I may be skipping out on a lot of things, but don't worry, in another video I will go over the lore behind this segment along with all of Act 1. And besides, you guys are probably playing along to this video, so you'll be able to listen to the conversations yourself. Once we are done with him, a Daedra ghost thing he will spawn. We must defeat it. This fight can be tricky if you're low leveled and weak to frost, so be aware. As soon as you defeat the entity, you will pass out again and return to the Ratway Warrens. Don't worry about looting the Daedra, it has nothing of importance in its ashes. However, we should worry about looting Giovanni as he has a unique ring on his body. He also has another piece of the red stone on him. Pretty interesting stuff. The red cat ring has its own unique texture resembling, you guessed it, a red cat. The enchantment will allow you to do 50 additional damage when using unarmed combat. This can be useful for a melee build along with the gloves of the pugilist you might have acquired getting to the rat way. Once you get out of Giovanni's dream, the quest will update. We must find and take Kapan Rayar's pelt from Marso. We can find him in Helga's bunkhouse. Look around for a quest marker. Once you find Marso, speak to him. If you're looking for a room, try to be in bar. This place is for the working man. Campanera is warm. Marso is happy. Very happy. Return Campanera, Marso. No! Kajit will never do this! Marso and Campanera are finally together! Why do you disturb us? Marso hates you! You smell like jealousy! Like Giovanni! Marzo hates Giovanni. After this line, he will attack you, so you must take him out. He has no armor, so he's a relatively easy fight. Just watch out for his fist. Once he's down, loot his body. 
we can find a few wealthy items including the amulet of Mara seen here and the black cat ring. The ring resembles obviously a black cat. It's a part of the Khajiit ring set the mod has added. This ring allows you to double your sneak attack damage with one handed weapons along with giving you 50% more archery damage. The ring can be useful for sneak assassin builds using daggers and bows. The ring also aesthetically looks really dark and gloomy, a perfect looking ring for a stealthy build. Let's get back to looting. Kampan Reha's Pell is what we are looking for. We must take the Pell off of Marso and bring it all the way back down to Giovanni's dead body in the Ratway Warrens. Once you put the Pell on the dead body, the quest will update asking you to return to Altano at the Ratway. Also, even though Giovanni's tail is still moving as shown here, he's still marked as dead and a ragdoll. I just wanted to state this in case anyone gets confused. Nice. Yes. Okay. I took care of the Gajit, his Daedra as well. Indeed. I'm glad to have such an excellent partner. Let's return to Stendar's beacon. Perhaps the summoner's been caught already. Thus spoke Khajiit will end, and the quest Old Guilds will start. Altano tells us we must return to Master Jacob at Stendar's beacon. When you return to the beacon, you will see many dead Vigilants of Stendar on the ground. The reason for these bodies will be up to the right of the beacon entrance. Stop. Not a step further. If I don't stop, what will you do then? Then I will cut you down like all the others. If you don't want to die, leave. Leave, I am sure you have someone who waits for your safe return. Why did you attack the beacon? I'm only doing my job. Is that a good enough reason for you? What happened to our pursuit team? Those chasers. I killed them. They're probably food for trolls somewhere now. All right. Whenever you get too close to him, he will become hostile and attack you. Make sure you're prepared for a hard fight because this may be the hardest fight in Act 1 overall. Obviously this guy doesn't want us to die which makes us believe he's being controlled by a powerful being, or maybe even a curse. Whatever the reason is, he stands in our way and we must defeat him. Once you defeat the mercenary, the quest will update. However, here it doesn't tell us what to do. We must follow our map marker and investigate the Stendar's Beacon basement. Before we do so, let's loot this guy's body. We can find a cursed greatsword, further indicating that this mercenary may have been cursed. We then find notes from people named Karin and Lillian. I plan to go over these notes in the Act 1 lore video, so stay tuned for that. Now we come across his armor set, the Vagrant Armor Set. I will go over this along with the great sword here in a second. And finally we have the wedding ring. It has a unique texture, however it does not have a unique enchantment. The cursed great sword has a display in the legacy of the dragonborn vigilant room. It has its own unique texture, however it comes with a non-unique soul trap enchantment. The grinning face of Molag Ball, interestingly enough, is plastered on the sword. So, maybe this mercenary was cursed by the evil Molag Ball himself. The Vagrant set, which resembles the Knight set from Dark Souls, has no special enchantments. It also doesn't have a display in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Vigilant Room, however, most armors in this mod don't. It's a nice change of pace compared to the vanilla Skyrim armors, as this set looks more warrior-like, more heavy, and a perfect set for anyone looking for a very basic Dark Souls resembling set. Follow your map markers to the trapdoor over here and use the key you got after defeating the mercenary to enter. Go down the steps and you will find Master Jacob who is injured. You must speak to him. Uh, what happened? We were attacked by the summoner. Everyone is dead but me. Again. Again. I'm the only one who survived. The Daedra called her Bull. Such a sinister name. She must be serving Moloch Bull. 
Her call can only be the altar underground. What do you mean? There is an ancient altar of Mullet Ball under the beacon. She's trying to do something terrible. We must stop her. Help Master Jacob. I'll scout ahead. You can speak to Master Jacob to get more information on the summoner. Also, Jacob will start to follow us. Follow me so we can advance the quest. I also wanted to add that there is an anvil of Zenithar down here, so if you want to see what you're able to craft, you can go on right ahead. I'm going to skip over Master Jacob talking to the ghost for now, as I will go over that in the lore video. Now that I have some free time to speak, I wanted to ask you guys, do you like the new video format? I'd love to hear about your opinion in the comments below. I also wanted to wish you guys a happy holidays, as I'm pretty sure this video is coming around Christmas time, so yeah. I hope you guys are having a good year, good end of the year at least. I know this year sucked for most people, including me. But yeah, let's get right back into the walkthrough. So once you reach this point, your quest should update, and it doesn't tell you what to do, but you have to enter the Molag Ball Altar. So let's go ahead and do so. Once you enter, walk up with Master Jacob and Altana. You will approach the summoner, Bal, and her two Daedra. Like usual, there is a lot of dialogue and story here, so if you're playing along with my video, you'll be able to hear it yourself in the game. For now, I'm going to skip over it and walk you guys through what happens in the situation in the lore video. After this line here, Bal and her Daedra will become hostile. This can be a tricky fight, especially since in Skyrim, numbers against you could equal a quick death. However, I make short work of them here due to my high level and low difficulty, so... The two Daedra will mainly focus on trying to hit you up close, while Baal will try to hit you with magic from far away. She isn't really that much of a problem though, so taking her out shouldn't be hard. As soon as you kill her, a ghost will pop out and speak to Master Jacob, who's over there injured. This is another segment that involves a little explaining, so I'll shove this in the lore video as well. When the ghost gets done talking to Jacob, he will die. Our quest will update telling us to talk to Altano. It's over. It's all over. Bring me the mace Bal was using. We'll need it. He'll basically tell us to loot Bal's body to grab the mace she was using to end this nightmare. The mace has nothing special to it, it's just another used texture and doesn't have any display anywhere, so it's just a quest item. Notice she also has a piece of the redstone on her as well, along with a journal, a necklace, and another pilgrim robe set, but this time this version is black. I will read you guys this journal in the lore video to explain more of what's happened. Now you must bring the mace to Altana. Altana will send you on a mission to go hunt some witches. Before I leave. However, before we go, we must loot Master Jacob. I get it, I get it. This is a sad moment and all, but we have to loot him to receive some more unique items. Jacob wore the Elder Vigilant robe set, without the mask, however. He also wielded the unique Vigilant Sword. The sword resembles a typical Dark Souls 3 longsword, with a nice, simple, and clean look to a sword. The enchantment isn't anything unique, as it's just a typical do more damage against the undead one. However, if you saw last episode, I introduced weapon arts. Most unique weapons in this mod have a weapon art. This sword has a pretty simple one, where if activated, will allow you to heal yourself and anyone in your vicinity. Weapon arts do cost magica, so make sure to use them wisely. Let's get back to the quest Altano gave us. He basically wants us to go hunt some witches. When you get the quest, this marker will show up near Falkreath. However, the marker is placed pretty awkwardly, so I'll show you guys how to get there from the city. Don't get this hut confused for the location. The door to the witch's coven is actually right over here. Once you arrive, enter it. Once you're here, follow me to get to the hut.
You will discover this named location. We must head on inside. Don't worry, these witches won't immediately attack you. You will notice these two people don't really look like witches. You can speak to each one of them if you want as I'm going to explain the situation even further in the lore video. There are two ways to advance this quest. The first way is to kill the two people. It's a pretty dark option to choose since you have to kill the child included, however there is another way. When you speak to both NPCs to get a further insight on them, you can head back to Altano and tell him you won't kill them. Here's what Altano will have to say about this. Witches are a serious threat in Skyrim. Purge them out. There are no witches in Iverstead. Is that so? So, you return without finishing your task. You have let yourself be deceived. I was clear about this. Go back and finish it. You will only know whether they are witches or not when they're dead. Go, now, and kill them! Altano, you can't be serious. Not serious? You're the one who's not being serious. You're out of your mind! Go! Kill the witches! This is your duty. This is wrong. Wrong? Why now? Haven't you killed in cold blood before? It's no different now. Just do as I say, and kill them in the name of Stendar. I won't do this, Altano. I see. You're adamant about this. Regrettable. Very regrettable. I don't like such brutality, but it seems I need to be clearer. After this line, Altano will start to attack you. However, you cannot defeat him. You can try to attack Altano, but your attacks, as shown here, won't do any damage to him. Once Altano lands a few hits on you, you will pass out to the ground, and he will say the following. You will kill these witches, and you will do so... You will wake up inside the witch's hut with Karin and Lillian dead right before your eyes. Whichever option you still choose, this outcome is the same. You'll still get the Curse of Stendar effect, which I will showcase here in a sec, and you'll get the new quest. First, I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you kill the two here. You will immediately notice that the world around you will shake and some sort of black fog will appear. You will then pass out to the ground before hearing the quest complete noise. When you wake up, you will notice there is a Curse of Stendar added into your inventory and another quest will start. We must return to the Temple of Stendar and tell him the witches have been killed. First, let's loot the bodies here and take a look at what the Curse of Stendar does. The Curse of Stendar will completely cancel out your stamina regeneration. Now I think I know what you guys are thinking, does this last the whole playthrough? Well, however, it doesn't. It will end after a certain quest. Let's loot Lillian's body. We can find the Apprentice Clothing Set, an Amulet of Stendar, and Lillian's doll. This doll has a display in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Vigilant Room, and it acts as an equipable item. Heading over to Karine's body now, she has the Pilgrim Clothing Set, an Amulet of Julianus, and a letter from Tyrannus. This letter actually reveals that Tyrannus was the cursed mercenary who we killed back at the Beacon. It's interesting how all of this ties together. You can take a look around the hut for any unique books or other items you want to take. Uh, and when you're done in here, let's head on outside. You'll run into an interesting creature. Getting old and senile. Mm -hmm. To curse his own servant. Looks like there's something wrong, not only with his eyes, but also with his mind. She has a very good amount of insight into the situation, so I will be conversating with her in the lore video. However, this isn't all she's good for, so stay tuned till the end of the video for a secret boss fight you can start with this witch. Before we head back to the temple, let's pick up a unique armor set and a few unique weapons here in this grotto. If you guys were wondering where I started off at so you can follow my route, it's the door that leads to Skyrim. If you follow my route, you will find a skeleton next to the bridge named Claimin the Witch Hunter. 
Search his body and you will find the unique Witch Hunter set, along with the Witch Hunter's gun and the Witch Hunter's saw. Yes, this mod adds a usable gun to Skyrim, along with a very cool looking saw type of weapon. The gun has an enchantment that allows you to do 36 points of damage, while the saw has no unique enchantment. No ammo is required to shoot the gun, as the weapon is actually a staff with just an enchantment. When you run out of charges, all you have to do is use a soul gem to be able to shoot again. This armor set and even the weapons can actually be found a couple times throughout Vigilant, so you will be able to have multiple copies of it legit. It's a really rogue and cool looking armor set that any sort of hunter would love to have in their arsenal. The set might be inspired by the Witch Hunter set from The Witcher 3, but I'm not very certain about the look. Comment down below if you have a good idea of where this armor set could have been inspired from. These items may count as unique, but all of the items do not have a display in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Vigilant Room. Now that we have gotten everything, I'm pretty sure we can get from the grotto, let's head back to the Temple of Sendar and confront Altano. Walk up to the traitor and speak with him. He will activate a conversation. Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to show up. And it seems even Stendar has forsaken you. Altano, why? There's no reason to explain anything to you. You will die now. Genghis, send this soul to Molag Ball. I must return to the altar and continue with the ritual. After this line, the Daedra will become hostile and attempt to kill you. We must banish him and send him back to Oblivion. Keep in mind that you still have the Curse of Stendar active effect, so you will most likely have no stamina majority of this fight. If you use potions, however, these will help you drastically here. Genghis is your typical Daedra, he will have a good amount of health, he will do a good amount of damage, and he will take a little while to take down. Once you defeat him, your quest will update telling you to look for any survivors, but first we obviously have to loot the body. By taking out this Daedra, you can grab his Daedra Greatsword, which is a really good early game option for any two-handed player. Now the quest told us to look for survivors, however if you want to loot the other Vigilance of Stendar, you can go ahead and do that. However, Thorondir will be dead, our old Vigilant Keeper. You can loot his body, you can find the Elder Vigilant Armor along with a random Mage Hood, and the Vigilant Greatsword. Like most other weapons from this mod, you will get a weapon art when you equip it. This one is Moderate Healing, which allows you to heal for a really good amount for the cost of 100 Magicka. The Elder Vigilant Armor and the Vigilant Greatsword can both be bought from the merchant downstairs in the Temple of Stendar along with finding it on Thorondir's body. The clothing has no special enchantments, however the pieces have their own unique textures. The Vigilant Greatsword has an enchantment that will allow you to do more damage against the undead. It's the same non-unique enchantment as the Vigilant Sword but for a two-handed weapon this time. It's a great early game undead killer, so if you are in need for a good weapon or two-handed weapon to guide you through the deadly Nordic tombs of Skyrim, this is a really good option. Let's get back to the quest now. Follow me to find the only survivor of this attack, Gwyneth, the merchant. Please, help me. I don't want to die. It's alright now. What happened? Altano. Altano summoned Daedra. We didn't understand what was happening. It was all so sudden. I couldn't do anything. I saw that Daedra tearing Throndir and others apart like it was nothing. I am so sorry. Please, stop Altano. He's doing something terrible. I understand. You should go get some rest. Yes. I will do that. I will rest. I don't have to worry anymore. After hearing that line, it makes you think that she's gonna bleed out and die, however she does not. She will stay alive and greet you near the end of Act 1, all healthy again. Our quest will update once we're done talking to her, telling us to go back to the altar that's Stendar's Beacon. 
When you enter Stendar's Beacon, you will come across all of these ghosts. You will soon realize they are the ghosts of people you've killed throughout Act 1. You are pathetic. I told you to stop. I will go over their stories in the Act 1 lore video, so I hope you guys will stay tuned for that. Leave me alone. Now there's one thing I want to say before we go to the altar door. It's actually locked, so you have to speak to Jacob first before you can unlock it. You're Talking to Jacob will also remove the Stendhal Curse of Stendar active effect. Now once you reach the altar, go ahead and head on inside for the final boss fight of Act 1. You will see Altano praying to Molag Ball. Fire will emerge from the altar, and what happens next will be shocking. Molag Ball himself will emerge from the altar. Altano wants a place in his realm, Molag Ball will do so for him, and then he will come speak to you. Child of Stendar, kneel before me and obey. Surrender your soul to me. Do this, and I promise you a swift death. Now, depending on what you do here, will change what kind of ending you get. I will first show you what happens if you offer your soul to Molag Ball. Then enter my belly. Cold Harbor welcomes you. Doing so will complete the quest, however, in the top left you will get two messages. Karma lost and Mark of Molag Ball obtained. He will also skip Acts 2 and 3 and end up in Act 4, which is Cold Harbor. What's wrong? If you haven't been able to tell, this is the bad ending for Act 1. Also, Karma is a very important part in this mod. I will explain what it is in more depth once we reach Act 4, but here's a quick description of what it does. Karma will alter what ending you get when in Act 4. Gaining or losing karma won't matter too much before Act 4 due to the act having many opportunities to gain or lose enough karma to get whatever ending you want. Like I said, I'll go over it more in depth once we reach Act 4. Now, the Mark of Molag Ball active effect will be obtained no matter what ending of Act 1 you choose. I'll explain what it does after we go over the good ending. If you have Legacy of the Dragonborn installed with the Vigilant patch and you choose this ending, when you return to Skyrim, the following display will be built. Daedric Prince Molag Ball touched the mortal world in the fourth era again, wearing the guise of a corrupted dragon and spreading his influence with the use of strange pieces of a mysterious red stone. The outcome of his summoning is unknown as of yet and surely spells nothing good for the mortals, but there are rumors of a confrontation with the dragonborn taking place. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over the good ending. Be gone, Molag Ball. Return to your realm. Mortal, you dare to turn down my merciful offer. I said, be gone. I hope you keep this spirit even when dying, mortal. Now, scream for me. Beg for mercy. After this line, the boss fight will commence. Luckily for us, the Curse of Stendar active effect is not active anymore, so we can use our stamina freely in this fight. Molag Ball has a good amount of health, does a good amount of damage, and is just downright terrifying. This may be a troubling fight to new characters, but if you have enough potions and perseverance, you might be able to fight through it. When you finally defeat him, a death cut scene will take place, the quest will complete, and you will gain karma. At the end of the cutscene, an item will be added into your inventory. I'll go over what it does in a quick second. A new quest will start, which will start off telling you to talk to Altano. Why did you do this, Altano? After the battle with Baal, I heard a voice whispering to me. So sweet. I couldn't help but obey. I gave in but to temptation please 
Forgive me. Rest in peace, Altano. Stendar be with you. Thank you. I... I... Uh... After he dies, the quest will update. First, let's loot his body to find a few unique items, including his journal. In the Act 1 lore video, I will read the journal and go over what it means for Altano. The Elite Vigilant robes don't have any unique enchantments, however they have their own unique textures. They also can be attained from Gwyneth, the merchant in the Temple of Stendar basement. The Blade of Mercy has a really cool look to it, resembling a Chattel from Dark Souls 3. Despite it being a unique weapon, it doesn't come with a weapon art. It however does more damage against the undead, like the Vigilant Sword and Great Sword. This could be a pretty useful weapon to go hunt some Draugr in any Nordic tomb. Now let's approach the altar and destroy this cursed mace. Pull out whatever weapon you're using and smack it. That should destroy it once and for all. Child of Stendar, I will be watching you, always. If even a spot of corruption touches your soul, the gates to my realm will open wide for you. After Molag Ball is done threatening you, the Mark of Molag Ball active effect will be added into your inventory. The quest will also update telling you to return to the Temple of Stendor. All the effect does is give you 5 plus fire resistance, so it's a pretty basic effect. The good thing about it is that it will last your whole playthrough. Throughout the mod, whenever you defeat certain boss enemies, you can actually obtain spell tomes called Pieces of Molag Ball. Using these stones will allow you to conjure up whatever boss enemy is listed. There are a lot of these conjuration type of spell tones in this mod, so if you are an inspiring conjuration mage looking to become a master conjurer, these spell tones will help you out tremendously. This piece of Molag Ball will allow you to conjure the dragon form of him, which is insane. The trade-off for these conjuration spells is that they only last 60 seconds, and most of them cost a lot of magicka to conjure. The dragon will take out enemies insanely quick, but due to the high amount of magicka you have to have to conjure him, you most likely won't be able to use him for a while. When we return to the temple of Stendar after defeating Molag Ball, Gwyneth will be standing outside the temple door and will greet you. Welcome back. What happened with Altano? Altano is dead. No. Did you kill him? No. Molag Ball killed him. I'm... I'm sorry. But if Molag Ball is here, what should we do then? I drove him away. For the time being, we're safe from him. You? You defeated Molag Ball. I can't... I can't believe this. He's a Daedric Prince. But your eyes... They're telling the truth. No, I believe you. So... What are we going to do now? Well, you and I are the only survivors of this temple. Even the Keeper died. You should become the new Keeper of Sindar. After all, you defeated Molag Ball. We can decide that without anyone's permission? Stendar will certainly recognize you as the Keeper. I'm sure it will all be fine. Now let's get back inside. After you're done conversating with Gwyneth, you will become the Keeper of Stendar, receive the Keeper's Horn, and the quest will complete, signifying that this is in fact the end of Act 1. The Horn is just a miscellaneous item, and it does have a display in the Vigilant Room for Legacy of the Dragonborn. Hey guys, Future Ace here, ignore what I just said, the Horn does have a secret use, however we won't be able to use it until later on in the mod. I would suggest keeping it on your character just for now. Once you enter the Temple of Stendar, Act 2 technically starts, so I'm not going to do that until the Act 2 walkthrough. Now, since we've completed Act 1, there's a secret interaction we can do with Rada, the Glen Moral Witch, back at Witch's Overlook. Wow. 
looks like your curse got lifted. The old fool must have gone soft-hearted. You can speak with her further to get more information on what she knows, Make but this dialogue option is the one we want to select. Come, come, I have a She's a really annoying and slow talker, so I'm gonna skip through this dialogue and yeah. When her dialogue's over, the boss fight will start. I just wanted to say that this boss fight was really hard for me. It takes me a lot of time. And yeah. I will fully show this boss fight in the Vigilant Boss Fight video. I actually didn't know about the secret fight at first. It took some research in-game and online to figure it out. But it's a nice touch by the mod author to include this. When we finally clear her health bar, she will immediately go into conversation with you. Like I said, she's a slow and annoying talker, so I'll skip a lot of it. Right now, you have two options. You can either spare her and let her go free, or kill her and loot unique stuff off her body. I will showcase what happens when you spare her. No karma will be gained or lost for doing so, and when you pick this option, you pretty much get nothing. Now, let me show you what happens when you kill her. No, your fate is sealed. When you land the finishing blow, you will gain karma. Let's loot this annoying hag's body. She has a piece of redstone on her, two witch dolls, which are miscellaneous displayable items in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Museum, and her witch costume. If your Skyrim character is a male, the witch set actually makes your person have the female body shape when equipped. The hat allows you to regenerate magicka 100% faster, and the robes make conjuration spells and enchantments cost 22% less. The robes also give you 150% faster magicka regeneration. Since most armor sets and clothing sets don't have a display built in the Legacy Dragonborn Museum, I plan to put all of the armor sets from Vigilant in the West and East Armories. Here is a quick showcase of all the sets from Act 1. This part of the video is going to show you where to display the artifacts you have received from Act 1 in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Museum. I will be using text and not my voice for this part of the video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and as always, peace out.
Daedric Prince Molag Ball touched the mortal world in the fourth era again, wearing the guise of a corrupted dragon and spreading his influence with the use of strange pieces of a mysterious red stone. Before he could cause any lasting damage, he was defeated and banished by the Dragonborn who recently joined the Vigilance of Stendar, a Daedra hunting guild in Skyrim.